another blender tutorial. And this one, we're just gonna continue on this model that we made in the previous one. This time we're gonna cover texturing. And as I mentioned before, I use Substance Painter for all of my, or I'd say 98% of my asset uh, texturing. You could, by all means, texture your model here in Blender if that's what suits you. For me, I just prefer the power and flexibility of Substance Painter. Uh, I find Blender Shader Editor way overly complicated and way overly uh, time consuming for most things. I do use Blender to texture, you know, broad landscape, nature type things, but for stuff like this, it's Substance Painter all the way. So let's jump into this. Uh, before we begin, uh, I mentioned before in a previous video that I use a third party add on called Zen UV for my texturing. Now, I know a lot of people don't have it and you could just, you know, UV unwrap this in Blender. However, it's not an expensive add-on. I want to say it's like 14 bucks. Don't quote me on that, but I think it's around there, 14 or 16 bucks or something on Blender Market and Gumroad. If you can make that happen, I highly recommend you get it. It will make your life so much easier when it comes to UV unwrapping. I highly, highly recommend it. So worth taking a look at, guys. Uh, let's jump into this. Let's start with our handle. So let's jump into UV editing. And, uh, you know, I did a little demo on this before, so I'm going to go through here. I'm just going to get rid of this uh, map. I'm going to make a new one. So it's clean slate. Okay, so here we go. Let's go ahead and isolate this. Let's give it a checkered pattern so it looks like this. Now, first thing I need to do is set some themes. So you'll notice here, I still have all my modifiers. I haven't applied anything. The reason for that is, as a side note, when I export this into Substance Painter, the export via FBX is gonna apply all the modifiers. Right now, I could apply all of the modifiers and just work with that. Um, and a lot of times your computer may run a little bit better if it's not having to calculate the modifiers, but for, I just like leaving them here just in case I need to change something later. Um, I never really know, but there, you know, you could just apply them. We're gonna leave them open for now, or I should say unapplied. All right, let's go add some seams. Let's start here. Let's... Get these going. I think this is it. Let's go ahead and just mark this. Okay. And let's unwrap this. And then there we go. Now, if we look at our unwrap now, right, look here, right? You see how these checkered pattern here is uneven? All right. Well, this will actually cause your texture uh, to conform to that. And we don't want that. So, um, but let's grab all of our islands here. They already are, but if they're not, you could just do this. Select islands. Let's quadrify these. Okay. And let's just pack them really quick just so they're in there. But let's just look at it now. Okay. Our UVs are perfect. They're aligned properly. Right all the way up through here. We're done. Okay. Let's jump into the base. Now for the base, right? Let's let's throw a seam here, a seam here. Let's turn off these modifiers for a second so I can see what I'm doing. Let's throw a seam there. Let's zoom way in. Seam. Come on. Let's mark those. And let's go up to what we think might be the back. And let's put, not all the way across. I'm not super worried about the seams here because Substance Painter will allow me to paint them out and literally it's like seconds. So I'm not overly concerned, but I wanna make sure it unwraps even. Let's unwrap this again, there we go. Okay, now we're gonna take this little edge here, let's put a mark there, a seam there. Okay. And if I wanna make this just a little bit, right now it's a continuous piece like this. If I wanna make this just a little bit shorter, 
Um, so it doesn't, you know, take up that much space. I'll throw another one here. And again, I'm not worried about the seams here because one, they're very small. And two, that didn't really help much. They're really small and um, let's just do this. Let's just grab. Let's see if we can just grab this edge here. Better let me do that. Um, you're barely going to see these, but I don't want it to be that big. There we go. See, that's better. Now, if I just pack these, select these, let's quadrify them. Oops. Can't quadrify these middle ones. That's not what I meant. I meant to quadrify only this one. That's interesting. Let's quadrify just this one. So let's grab this. Select these, quadrify that. There we go. Yeah. Let this get turned off. There we go. Turn that back on. And that's better. Oh, we could do this. So there we go. Sorry. Got a little funky there for a second. We can turn these back on. All right. There we go. Let's move on to the legs. Now, in hindsight, what I probably should have done was made one of these legs, UV unwrapped it, then duplicated it, or, you know, arrayed it, and then modified them to look differently. Then I wouldn't have to do this one at a time. That's just something I just overlooked when I was explaining how to model this. Um, but that would most likely be the better way to go. Let's just go ahead and put those seams there, because now we're just going to do it one at a time, which is kind of a pain in the butt. Um, let's unwrap that. I'm not going to worry about quadrifying any of this. Let's just make sure this is on on all these things. So let's, okay, so then we can keep an eye on this. And don't worry about this weirdness right here. We're going to come back to this in a second. Um, same thing here. I'll speed this up, guys. You know, it's the same thing over and over again. Okay, so now that those are done, one of the things I can do is just select all of them now. They're kind of funky here. Let's just quadrify these and pack them. And so now if we look at them, everything is going the right direction. Everything looks good. And that's pretty much it. We're done, right? So from here, because we don't want any overlapping UVs, we select all of this. We go into edit mode. You can see this is a mess. We don't want this. So we're just going to Pack Islands. Um, I am using uh, Packmaster Pro to pack these, which it really doesn't matter. Let me see something here. Let me make sure this is. Let's make sure that these are. Okay. So you can see that this is pretty big. Um, most of, the, most of the things are small, which is why it looks like this here. But if you look at it like this, it all matches, right? The texel density matches. It's not taking up a whole lot of space. And that's just because these would have to be big, this would all have to be big, and then this would all be, it wouldn't match, right? Okay. So that's it. Save it. Let's select all of it. Let's remove the checker nodes. We're back to here. We'll go back to here. Okay, this is done. Okay. So once you're done with your UV unwrap, select the collection, save the model as an FBX, just go to File, Export, FBX, choose your uh, save location and hit save and you're ready to go. All right, guys, I'm gonna jump over to Substance Painter and just let's just texture this thing really quick. All right, guys, here we are. In Substance Painter, our template, PBR Metablet, Metabolic. PBR metallic roughness is what we want. I've selected my model. I'm choosing a document resolution of 2048 or 2K. I can change it later, no big deal. Normal map format is OpenGL and I'm hitting OK. And voila, there is our model. I'm gonna shift the light around here a little bit. Okay, so just like in previous tutorials, I wanna go in here, go to my texture set settings and I wanna bake the maps. So because I'm not baking down to anything, I'm just baking this. I'm going to choose the same 2K texture, which is fine. And I'm going to select this. 
use low poly mesh as high poly mesh. Select that, I finally get better bakes with that. Nothing else needs to change. I didn't use any ID matting or anything, so we are good. Bake this. Ta-da! That's it. Now, from here, I mean, do whatever you want, right? I'm just gonna make this super short and super easy. I'm gonna go to my smart materials. I'm gonna look up metal and there is an iron. Let's see, there's a couple of irons, where are they? Dude, okay, iron forged, iron old. Let's try iron forged. Just drop that on there. That looks pretty cool, right? And again, mess with it however you want. Now, in the photo, if you remember, um, the iron is actually in these medieval candles is actually very dark. It's not this light. So what we can do, let's get rid of this. Let's go into our layer stack here. Let's grab our base layer, which is our color layer. And let's just take the color of this and let's just drop it down to something like that. That's more true to what we would see in one of these, um, you know, handmade things. Now, of course you can go through here and um, you know, you can get rid of the edge detail if you don't want it to be damaged, you can change it. Um, there's some dirt in here. Like this is all stuff that was, you know, pre-made in this and I'm just doing this for, for speed. Um, by all means, go through and make whatever texture you want. Um, but for the sake of speed, here we go. This looks pretty good. Um, yeah, I'm not even gonna do anything else for this tutorial. We like that. We're gonna just go to file. Export mesh, sorry, export textures. That's a whole different ball game, exporting the mesh. Export textures, and then choose your uh, save location. Save the textures there. We'll jump back into Blender. We'll apply them and call it a day. All right, guys, see you back over in Blender. All right, guys, here we are back in Blender. Let's go ahead and apply our textures. Let's jump into our shading tab here. Let's just start with the uh, handle. Select on it. Let's just call a new material. Let's just call it, um, I don't know, handle holder. Now, last time I used Node Wrangler, um, and I'm sure those of you who use Node Wrangler love Node Wrangler. What I'm going to do this time is just drag them in one at a time just to kind of show you. Here are my textures from Substance Painter. And if I switch this to list mode, we can see what I'm looking at here. I've got color, height, metallic, normal, and roughness. Let's just start with the color. Bring that one in. Let's connect color to color. Yay! So far, so good. And we can just hit H to, or to collapse it, rather. Let's bring in our metallic. Make sure that when you bring this in, you switch this to non-color data. Connect that to metallic, hit H to collapse it. Okay, looking pretty good. Let's bring in our roughness. Drag our roughness in. Now you guys see why I like Node Wrangler. I don't have to do any of this. And it's free and it comes with Blender. Okay. Roughness. That, let's go ahead and bring our, oops, come on, graphic tablet. Come on. See, windows and tablets, they get weird. Okay, here we go. Non-color data again. This time we'll drop this on the normal. Let's go ahead and just shift A, vector, normal map, just drop that on there. And just hit H to hide both of those. And something like this is fine, okay. Now, the height, we could do a couple different things with. Um, because we're, this model is subdivided, if we were to bring the height down, let me just bring it in to show you. Okay, non-color data. Now, if I were to um, control shift click this, right, you can see there's nothing here, right? Like it didn't really, Substance Painter didn't really need the output height map, um, but it just does by default under that setting. So you don't really even need to select this, right? Um, but if you wanted to put it in just for shits and giggles, um, then just, or let's say you did have a height map, for example, on your export, um, then just drag it over to displacement, shift a, a um, uh, displacement, drop that on there, move this to height, um, and then adjust your scale accordingly. You know, usually it's gonna be 0.1, somewhere around there. Um, now, 
because there's, I'm using all these model elements are using the default built-in UV uh, map. I don't need to assign this to a UV map unless I wanted to make changes, but I, I don't. So that's pretty much it, okay? Um, now what I'll do is with that handle selected, I'll hit A, selects everything else, Control A, select materials, hit enter, and this, here we go. All right, we jump back into our layout mode. It's, there is our textured candle holder. Done. All right, guys, save it. That's how I texture it in Substance Painter if I'm doing it super quick and easy. Um, if it was an asset that um, I was using for a project, that you know, for a client or something, I'd spend more time and really work that texture. But you guys get it. That's kind of how I, that's my workflow. Blender, Substance Painter, back to Blender. And it is done. So again, if you guys like what I'm doing, I would, Highly appreciate if you like the video, subscribe if you're not already. That helps me out. And I can't say how much I appreciate that. I really do. I really do appreciate that a lot. Um, if you guys want to comment in, in the comments below about making a candle, putting this thing together, doing something else with it, let me know. If you want, we'll go ahead and do a candle. We'll do some sculpting. We'll put this all together. Maybe we can just keep building a medieval scene or something like that. That, uh, that this candle would just become the primary asset for all right, guys. Hope you learned something. Hope you had fun. We'll see you in the next one. Cheers.